Ops Admin David from Trivial Solutions I owe you. And today I uh, decided to make a short video about like this will not be like super high level architectural stuff but it will be rather trivial you see what I did there it will be trivial tips on how to like what I've uh, have experiences that help me run docker containers more productively like this is this will be like purely practical stuff like nitty gritty details that might help you like get more performance or debug things and so this uh, I run uh, containers on HashiCorp Nomad but this I think pretty much all of these apply also to Kubernetes so this will be like a universal video if you would so without further ado we can start and the first thing I want to say is I avoid if I can because some images are pre-built nobody's asking me right and I'm too lazy to build images myself then but there are some bare-bone alpine images well not alpine the problem is not like Alpine images have shell, but the really bad Docker images that piss me off the most don't have any shell. It's just executable. And uh, what's what's the issue with that? And someone say, okay, these images are lightweight. Where maybe the only the binary that's the size of the image that's great on one hand, but on the other hand, if things don't work if uh, like some networking don't work you want to ping something well you cannot execute into the image with a shell and you cannot debug anything right so i don't have anything about lightweight linux distros or you know just uh, ship binary or something but it really pisses me off when uh, you're <laughs> something doesn't work in production you're under stress and after you deploy the image you can't execute into it and you can't you can't do anything you, that's just guessing game at that point you only see logs and that's pretty much it you can't you can't get into the container state and for instance ping telnet can you reach connect can you reach that ip can you do this this that you can't do, you can't install any package you can't install any debugging tool so that's why i prefer as image base like one of these old like fatter images like uh, say Debian or uh, what is it Alma Rocky Linux like what are these OG distros where you know I know that if something doesn't work and I need to debug something I just execute it to the image uh, SSH into the image essentially I write app get update install the debugging tools I need for instance I want ping I want telnet uh, I may want curl and etc. Right, and and then I can, I have a lot more freedom inside the image to see what is wrong. And if you have just base image, well, you're at the guessing game. Tough luck. So that's why I avoid bare bone images that only have executable in them, because. I sweated a few times in production. I don't like sweating. I don't like stress. I like to be able to debug stuff. So that's why I avoid these. Okay, so this was the first point. Avoid bare bone images. Second point, I use hashes instead of tags. And well, some tags, uh, how do you say it? Some people version their images normally. So like every new image is a new is a new tag right then but not to track it not to worry about it there are some people that publish software they might publish on their main tag and they don't have anything else or they publish like a month tag and push multiple times or i, I will not mention names but it pisses me off <laughs> that's what what i usually do when i deploy my nomad jobs and when you can do with kubernetes deployments as well I use uh, the image form that uses a hash and I'll uh, write it a little uh, quick. So say HA proxy image, HA proxy, 
then there's this uh, at and SHA256 dot dot and then there's a hexadecimal hash of the image so for instance this image can be pulled multi uh, multiple ways one of it is HA proxy with SHA checksum so you will only get this image this is the hash of the image you're not getting anyone else if somebody pushes over this tag you'll still get this image this is deterministic and what I do not to, because of course hash is for human it's not nice what version is it like who knows so what I usually do I leave the tag in the comment so HA proxy J proxy and the tag is say one two three so this is our role I define uh, the ta tag in the comment and then I say the hash of the image when I was pulling that tag so this way you know I don't need to remember I don't need to see who is doing nasty things with tags who is pushing over the same tag multiple times I don't do that I just have this convention the image tag in the comment and the real uh, like what will be pulled is with a hash it's the same thing but you're saying that this will be only this image and nothing else and nobody will upgrade on your their, your feet and you will never wake up one day oh well this image was redeployed it's doing funny things because version changed under your feet so yeah so that's that's how I roll with this uh, the tag in the comment and uh, check some in the what you will pull so that's another tip so the third tip is uh, if you have like an entry point and it says a shell script you might set up some files some stuff right so there are a few ways uh, to run the final executable the process like say it's HA proxy you can just say HA proxy image not image but executable you're in a shell here right so you're in a shell you can say he proxy and you're in a say bash so this will spawn another process inside the bash shell what instead you should ideally do is put exec in front so what will happen now with exec in your shell the bash process will get consume disappear if you would and the workflow will go to HA proxy image so this will be the first PID this will be the first PID the HA proxy will be the first PID in the image why is this significant well if you like control the image be it from Kubernetes or from uh, Nomad if you send a kill command restart command to the image you might send the kill command to the bash shell but you don't want to do that what you want to do is send the kill command to restart the process directly to HA proxy process and it sends to the first PID of the docker container so uh, I used to do this mistake very while ago but uh, just throwing this in there some people might know this already but yeah so if you're running an entry point from a shell make sure you use exec on the main daemon that will run in the process so it would become first pit and it would react to the kill commands inside the docker container yeah so the fourth point is I run quite a few images I like running as little overhead as possible right so I usually use network uh, host mode Right, so what does this happen like what does this do by default if you run docker image it runs uh, inside like a docker uh, driver network so it has some overhead and then uh, probably golang executable or I'm not sure what's down below is routing traffic to your docker container but if you write I want to use host networking you're only using Linux kernel stack to route your networking and it will be the fastest mode possible just no overhead right 
But, well, I usually uphold this rule that I don't do optimizations unless I need to. But, you know, if like some, uh, I usually do this for load balancers that by default I run in the network mode is host. So I know load balancer doesn't have any network overhead. So that's, that's what I do with a lot of containers that might need to shuffle a lot of traffic around, right? And uh, the, fi the, fifth, uh, the fifth point is, there are a lot of cases if you're deploying like a new Nomad job or be it Kubernetes job, you're deploying YAMLs the first time. If you're deploying a new component, a lot of times your container will just fail. Of course, you're deploying the first time, you can't really debug Okay, then you're looking at Nomad UI. Okay, the container restarted a few times. What are the logs? Why, why doesn't it work, right? So to save time, when if I see that I edit the Nomad job file, like once or twice, and it's still not working, what I usually do, so this is your like a initialization entry point, right? And you're going here. And this is your main, like say, HA proxy process. This is the first process that will be running and it has all sorts of arguments like, you know, this configuration might not work, this might log errors. And the containers are starting, I don't know why it doesn't start. So what I usually do in such cases to troubleshoot much faster, I put in sleep. Nine, 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 nine. Just so, okay, so if I deploy an image like that, of course, it's not functional, right? If you put a slip here, sleep here for that time, nothing will go past this, right? And, and very, <laughs> you have to wait a lot. But anyway, now what happens is your container is running of course if you don't have health checks yet it will not be restarted and it's in running state it's running in the exact environment and in the exact nomad environment you can reproduce that environment by running docker like manually or appropriate argument but it's very easy i just put this in an entry point my container is running although he proxy is not running that i want to run and then i exec into the container and i simply try to running this and then I have this very nice interactive experience where I can see, okay, this argument, it instantly throws me errors if something's not working, something's, something's bad happening, and I instantly see, why is this container not starting? Or for instance, in HA proxy case, uh, it might be in the mode where it simply, it starts in such a mode that it's not like simple process, but it forks process in the background and then exits. That way container also will not start. It will keep restarting, right? So you can then, after the sleep, you exec into the container and you can really fast try running lots of combinations of configuration until you see, okay, this configuration is working, right? This is now working and it's now deployed because otherwise, if you don't do this, then, you know, it's just, no my task runs, then it stops, then you check logs and it's a guessing game and uh, it's not as convenient. It takes a lot of time to modify HashiCorp job files, uh, no my job files and keep running it. But if you put in sleep there, there's no problem. You exec into the container. Of course, if you uphold this rule here, if your container is not bare bone, <laughs> you exec into the container, try running the shell with a lot of multiple permutations of everything and you can troubleshoot issues very quickly of why it's not working and of course when you find out the, what's the good command here you edit job file remove this and you just run the container so yeah so these are my like uh, basic uh, very pragmatic tips and tricks what i use in running docker containers hopefully this is helpful to you and i'm sure if you have some tricks from your experience Make sure to leave a comment and also like to know what would make my life easier. So yeah, so this has been David from TrivialSolutions.io. Uh, I'm signing out. Peace.